Hi, welcome to Leap Taken. This is Mika here at Leap Taken. I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. Let me just start by saying Merry Christmas because this video will be posted on Christmas Day. And um, because I am truly all pagan, uh, this video has nothing to do with Christmas. Actually, this is my witchy review, and I'm doing it on a book uh, called Hoodoo for Beginners. So. I purchased it on my Kindle, so here's the cover. I'm, hopefully this comes up. Yeah, I think this is coming through. Hoodoo for Beginners. The author is Angela Ballard. It says, Hoodoo for Beginners, working magic spells in root work and conjure with roots, sorry, herbs, candles, and oils. So that's what the book is um, entitled. So I read the book. It's a very quick read. I think it's like barely 100 pages. It was copyright this year, so it just came out. And um, yeah, so the, there's about 13 different chapters, uh, not including the introduction and conclusion. Um, the author goes into talking about her hoodoo roots, um, a little of the history of hoodoo, the elements of hoodoo, and then root work. So it go, those are kind of like the um, parts of the book that really explain things. Next goes into spiritual cleansing, conjure oils, magic candles, mojo bags, spells for love, spells for money and luck, spells for success, spells for protection, and spells for justice. So um, ultimately, it, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It, it was easy to read book. There is definitely something you can take from it. I would recommend adding it. It's a short read. You can definitely add it to your library. Um, if you have Kindle Unlimited like I do, um, I, I didn't have to pay for it. It's part of, you know, part of the um, monthly things. So I didn't have to pay for anything. So I would suggest maybe getting um, that if possible. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Ah, anyway, I would suggest this if possible. Um, my overall review of the book, um, it was good. It was good. But if you watch this channel and you've seen more, okay, let me just start over. If you know me from this channel and I've discussed in the past about, you know, who do I actually recently put out a video, who do, uh, behold the Christianity. Um, you would understand that it's hard for me to sometimes get with some of these books because it, there's a heavy influence of using parts of Christianity. Um, like, here's a sentence that the author wrote. Um, she's explaining about them having to hide hoodoo and Christianity. When African slaves were brought to North America, they were not allowed to practice their old religion. Slaves were forcibly baptized into Christianity, either Catholicism or Protest Protestantism, depending on their owners. They had to hide their old religion practices under a veil of Christianity. So many aspects of Christianity weren't so very different from traditional African religions. The African slaves already believed in one creator, God. So many believed in powerful spirits that help run the world and recognize Catholic saints as just another aspect of those spirits. And then it goes on, the Bible was seen as a powerful spell book. Even today, many traditional hoodoo workings include reading various psalms while casting a spell. So watch the other video <laughs> and you'll understand, you know, my issue, my, not the issue, my issue with why this is not going to resonate with me. Um, it's a nice explanation. It scratches barely the surface, but you'd have to go a little bit deeper on why does Christianity seem very um, similar to African traditions? That's not something to just kind of glaze over, but it, the book was only about a hundred so pages. So I get why the author didn't go into a whole thing about it. But the, the little bit more on that subject is because it is um, a bit of a culmination taken from different, you know, ancient uh, religions um, or spirituality that that's why Ugh. anyway so that that kind of bugged me so that so for me I'm reading that like I'm skipping over that because I already know so I'm not tripping but I skip over it but you know I don't that that's gonna automatically you know get me off of it <laughs> it's gonna automatically kind of turn me off in the book to be honest with you but I persevere because the book is not that long um 
a lot of basic information. If you are something like, it's Hoodoo for Beginners. So if you are hearing about Hoodoo and you see videos and people kind of talk about it and it's all different kinds of people who look real different and you're not sure what's what, um, I could say read this book and you can get a short bite size uh, view of what Hoodoo is and maybe what it is not. Um, the other, I wanted to point out some notes here because I, I did highlight and met, had notes because there was something um, that kind of stuck. There were a co actually quite a few things that stuck out to me, but to wrap up um, the Christianity thing as well, I just want to come back to that because there was another thing she had wrote, even so, because of our Christian roots, many of us are guided by strong moral ethical beliefs. This was under the subject, um, the chapter for spells for justice. So the author is giving spells for justice and I was like okay I'm, I'm with you on that I see it like um she was talking about invoking ancestral spirits for aid um when you practice hoodoo one of the things that you will come to learn is the fact that we do not actively believe in karma I don't know some people might have a problem with that because I know some people who practice hoodoo do believe in karma I don't believe in karma in the, probably the way that it's constantly used, like, you know, basically somebody did something to you, you know, something somewhat negative happens to them and said, that's karma. That's how most people use karma. I don't see it that way. So, um, so I guess in that line, <laughs> going with that uh, type of thinking, yeah, I guess she's right. But then she adds that part. Even so, because of our Christian roots, many of us are guided by strong moral ethical beliefs because of that so the thing that was forced on people is why you have ma'am no, sit down see this is the kind of stuff that sends me and I know there's a lot of people on the surface you hear that you're like well what's wrong with that statement I don't see anything wrong with it well if you're you don't have a short memory yeah it, it's sweet it's it's real folksy but if you think a little bit more than you know you and your mama and your grandmama, you know, and you think a little bit further then you can understand that that's problematic as I don't know what, but anyway. Um, but yeah, the karma thing, I thought that was very interesting that she's going into that. I guess the purpose of introducing that is to, to later go into the type of spells that she's going to mention, like um, getting justice with five unique spells. So there's five different spells that she has. One is the make it stop. Now, I think this is going to be helpful for some people uh, right now. Uh, if you are in a position right now, you know, you have your money's has your money hasn't been coming in income, whatever, because of COVID and stuff like that. A lot of people have businesses that have might have been effect, in, uh, affected by, you know, the lack of um, money because things were closed down because of uh, the pandemic. So. The purpose of this spell is to temporarily, temporarily hold off people from taking legal action until you are ready to deal with the situation. This immediately made me think of people who are struggling with evictions right now. Um, I know that they are supposedly passing something or it, it will pass or, you know, where it'll able continue and so forth. But if you're in a unique situation where that doesn't apply to you, but you're in the same boat with everybody else where the eviction, you know, it's knocking on your door. They have a spell here for this one. And I, I thought it was good. So it requires a piece of paper, a transparent jar. Now, the jar you're going to have to be careful because it's basically a freezer spell. And if you understand what happens when you put a, jar, a glass jar and you freeze it, it, it usually cracks. So, um, not all of them because I've done it and it doesn't always, but you got to be careful because I've put um, uh, like vodka in a freezer, you know, it was in a glass and it didn't crack, but you got to be careful. Sometimes it can. So just be careful with the type of jar you're using, I guess. But anyway, write on a sheet of paper, everything you are going through with the court case. So um, it, I'm thinking for somebody, if you're dealing with eviction or something like that, you can easily put, you know, most likely you were served legal paper. So what you're going through is, you know, you don't have enough money to pay the rent. It's backed up, blah, blah, blah. Focus particularly on the changes that have been made against you and what your worries are about the case. That would be easy, right? Insert this paper into a jar of water and put it in the freezer. The spell is done. As long as that water stays frozen, the case or pending legalities will be frozen. 
However, bear in mind that this is only a temporary. It does not stop the problem, it simply puts it on hold. So let's say you know you just need a little bit more time to get your money together, you, there's an opportunity coming, but they want it now. This is probably something you can do for that. Now, it's simple enough. A lot of, I mean, to be honest with you, when it comes to who do I think the simplicity is the deceiving part because you think, oh, it's so simple, how is that gonna work? It's all about your intention. You can bring other things into this. You can come to the working um, already, you know, on a certain type of energy. You might have had a spiritual bath. You might have uh, meditated and or hopefully you've done all these things. Anyway, ground yourself. Um, directed the focus of your energy specifically on the self. So there's a lot of other background that you're doing that she's, you know, she kind of talked about in the beginning part um, about petitioning for help, ancestors and all that sort of stuff. But you want to, you know, do it, like I said, simple on the surface, but you want to do, you know, that the pre-work <laughs> uh, to get yourself to the position where you can, you know, affect, do the spell effectively uh, to have a, a successful outcome. So I thought that actually was a very nice, um, not nice, but I thought, I thought it fit kind of what's going on. So I, I did like that. Now, let me see, because I had another note in here. Um... Hold on a second, because, yeah, this was in, a con in the conclusion. So she goes on saying, being a hoodoo practitioner is more than just casting spells. This I agree with, and changing your destiny. Destiny. It is about aligning yourself with your spiritual purpose. And she says, I am thankful and honored to be part of your process, you know, because you're reading the book. But this this is something I totally co-sign as well. Um about being a hoodoo practitioner. It is more than just about casting spells and changing your destiny. Um, sometimes, you know, I think a lot of us at times, it or not us necessarily, but there's people who present that they're practitioners, they're hoodoo practitioners. Um, I see, you know, this year I've seen so many pop up, you know, like on Instagram and of course, uh, TikTok, Witch Talk, I'm, I'm there, <laughs> so I, I see it, and I, I find those, some of them entertaining and somewhat informative. TikTok, not so much, a little bit, but it's more for entertainment. Honestly, for me, that's what I get out of it, but anyway, um, you see a lot of this, and it seems to me it's all about the spells. It's all about, you know, they, they're, this is their job. You know, they do cast spells for people. So, you know, you're going to see a lot of advertisements, so to speak. A lot of what they're doing is to show you, hey, look what I'm doing. I cast these spells. So I totally get that part. But it almost paints a picture that's all it's about. Um, when it's just, it's one more thing in your overall ar arsenal of your spiritual path, of aligning with your spiritual path. Because... As I mentioned, that that uh, freezer spell basically that she provided in the book to slow things down. Um, in order for that to work, in, from how I would, how I practice, I, in the pre work is very necessary. All that lead up is important. The ambiance, the energy in the room, me cleansing the room before I do that type of working, because um, to me that's kind of, you're going against other people's will. There's the system itself, the will of the system, um, meaning the processing of eviction, the courts, all that. You'd be going against that. You're going against the landlord. And depending on who you're um, leasing from, it could be a conglomerate. It's not like a one person thing. It's, you know, a bunch of investors. And their will and their energy is aligned with making profit. <laughs> So there's a, and then the people in between, so who want to keep their job, you know? So keeping their job means they show up and they do as they're told, but they are also bringing a certain level of energy of making sure that this engine keeps going the way it is. So you're trying to modify that whole, all of that. And uh, that's going to take a little more energy than just, you know, writing things down, and I, I don't say this to be smart, but it, it takes a little bit more than just writing things down, putting in a jar that has water in it, freezing, and saying, oh, I hope it works. You're going to have to do a little bit more um, than that, and that, what I'm referring to as pre-work is, is part of it, and the pre-work extends to not just the day, the day of casting the spell. Um, 
and this goes kind of to me more into just being a practitioner. I'm not going to say which, because I know everybody, the label thing kind of throws people, but being some sort of a practice, practitioner, right? There's a lot of other stuff of work, um, energies, uh, vibrations, frequency that need to be aligned with and you need to be maintaining this. This is how you grow on this path. This is how you have successful spells. So yes, um, it might seem sometimes almost a chore doing certain things. Yeah, I know the moon, I can feel the energy, I'm fine. You know, I can sit here and have a glass of wine and I feel the effects of the energy. I don't need to do anything more. All right, a couple of times I'll give you that, but there are other times you do need to get off your butt. Maybe put the glass of wine down and do things. Sorry about the background noise, guys. Um, you will need to do more to align and in tune and download messages. Uh, there are times, um, you know, if you're working with specific goddesses and things like that, they have certain days um, that, um, you know, people celebrate them or celebrate some aspect of them. So you're going to, you know, if, you, if you've been petitioning these go this goddess, right? you can only keep skipping you know some of the days and then let's talk about altars so you know cleaning them it's the the, the mundane task of actually physically dusting them off and cleaning them yeah do that that's important also spiritually cleansing them metaphor um, metaphysically cleansing the area and making sure that that portal stays open for them making sure that there's um energy flow it's not stagnant in that space because Things might have been working, but you know, now you're in this predicament, your head's kind of messed up right now because you know, you, you're about to lose your home. Um, back to my example with the eviction and the spell. So if you haven't been maintaining um, as a practitioner, you know, all the things that, that make you the practitioner that you've been, or in that you're or trying to be, then they those systems and everything else eventually may may kind of go south, may fail you, and these spells might not work in a time a dire time, like an eviction notice, and you really need to use that hoodoo, to use that working, to use that magic at that point to bend energy to will it in your favor. Um, so that's all. That's my little piece on that, and this is hard learned lessons over the years reading lots of books yes some youtube channels but before the youtube it was more books um me actually physically meeting with people uh talking about this sort of stuff and trying to understand i've gone to festivals and things of that nature drag my poor husband along with this stuff he never lets me go by myself he's always thinking that's you know the day they're gonna finally kill me they being i don't know the crazies i don't know but anyway he he's He's like, hey, do what you want, but yeah, I'm not going to let you go there by yourself. I'm going to go with you. He has no idea, has no interest in any of it, but he just sits and, you know, nods and is friendly and why he gets took up all the information. But anyway, all of this, uh, just wrap it up, all of this stuff really just, um, the, the pre-work and, and the stuff, all that stuff in between, it really does matter because when it's time to, you know, pull open a hoodoo, uh, hoodoo book, <laughs> um, and pull out a spell and you're like hey why isn't this working for me why am i struggling <laughs> why is my spell not working all the other spells i've done have worked why is this one not working is it possible you haven't been doing all the things you know to maintain going forward so i caution uh the book am i getting this in a frame right yet the book is great i i, I would write great for a beginner for sure for understanding overall concepts this is just something to add to your library. It doesn't start and stop with this book. You want to add more. You want to still learn a little bit more. But I think it's a nice representation of just getting a basic knowledge of hoodoo and using some of the spells and kind of trying your hand at it a little bit. Like I said, I think some of the background information could be fleshed out a little bit more, but it was a short read and I think that was intentional. So I get it. Was any, everything that was said in the book is true. Um, I'm just saying, I, it could, I, I, I would want more information, but you probably have to research to get that additional information. But all in all, witchy review, and my, and this is witch's uh, view, 
uh, yeah, get the book. It's it's a good thing to add. It's it's a quick read, and I think there's helpful information. Yeah, the spells themselves that uh, that are in there, I think they're great or great for building on. Hmm. So yeah, that that's my review. So thanks again for watching. This is Mika Leap Taken. Please like, subscribe, share, and uh, if you've already subscribed, again, thank you very much and Merry Christmas one more time. Bye bye.